thing that makes the change so incredible as it's coming into this decade, or we're well into the decade, what makes it uh, really frightening, I suppose, is that a study was done 18 months ago, and this figure is probably inaccurate today, is that knowledge is doubling every 20 months, according to studies. Now, that's frightening. That's frightening. You know, they used to say when you, uh, when you uh, started out, if you're old like me, I don't look old. I mean, I know I don't look old, but if you're old like me, they used to say that you will change jobs every five years because of the changes that are going to occur. Now they're saying you're going to change jobs. People out of university will change jobs upwards of 15 to 20 times in their lifespan. FedEx come up and said, you know, you want a time story? I got a time story for you. In Australia, you know, they supply air-cooled beef to Japan. The problem with supplying air-cooled beef to Japan is you have to slaughter the cattle, get it on a plane, get it into Japan before the Japanese, the customer, considers that the food is going off. They don't like frozen food. And you know, here's the dilemma. They go and slaughter the cattle and all of a sudden there's a plane delay. The weather's bad, can't land in Tokyo, got to offset someplace else. And all of a sudden now, profit margins are going down. They may not be able to sell this stuff. So how do they resolve this? The Cattlemen's Association got in touch with FedEx and said, can you resolve this problem for me? Can you put me in point of time? At some point in time, I want to have to be able to pick up the phone. I want to hear FedEx say, the schedule is on. We are leaving in 49 minutes. Now, these people start to slaughter cattle like nobody's business, chop it up, put it in boxes, get it over to the plane, and put it on, and get it off in time, and they save themselves all kinds of money. Time means different to each one of those partners. FedEx wants to run their planes on time. The Cattlemen's Association wants to get the optimum slaughter time. The people in Japan care about how long their heat has been sitting in the cooler. The customer, customer service. You know, I was in Holland doing a speech in December. I was at the Hague. You've all done this. You've gone to the hotel. You say to the bellman or whatever outside, you want to get me a cab? guy says, I'll call one. I said, well, you don't need to call one. I can see a row of them outside there. He said, no, no. He said, I'll call one. He called Cat. These guys, you know, they'll take you someplace, and we'll call somebody. Said, Trust me, wait. Well, I waited. It was only a couple of minutes. And this guy drove up in this nice-looking Jaguar sedan, four-door sedan. And he jumped out of the car and ran around in the rain with his umbrella. He escorted my wife and I to the car and opened the door got us inside, all nice and polite, he jumped in the car, asked me what kind of music I'd like to hear. Right. Sounded a little bit strange for a cab company, it's almost like a limousine service, but I can assure you this was a cab company. You know, here in Montreal, not to criticize Montreal, this is the same uh, all over the place, all over the world. I know, I've been there, right? You don't get a cab driver to get out of the car to do anything. I mean, he wouldn't get up to knock his old lady down the street. He is not going to do anything. He sits there, and you have to let yourself in. And when you get in, it stinks in there. If it isn't body odor, it's uh, high karate aftershave lotion or whatever. He got hair down here, uh, the dandruff falling off like snow. He gets his rock and roll tape deck going, burp, burp, and he doesn't give a damn what you're doing. And he rips around town and eventually gets you to the other end, and you think to yourself, my God, I went through this again. And I paid for it. Isn't that wonderful? I paid for that service. And there's these people in Holland who've got these nice clean cars, nice drivers, shirt and tie, open the doors. When you get to the other end of the hotel, he doesn't just pop the trunk. He doesn't get out and just load your baggage on the sidewalk. He actually got out and lifted it all out and walked it into the hotel for us. And you think to yourself, this is a reflection of somebody who understands customers. The 
cab business had been around for a dozen years. I finally found a cab company who knew something about me.